It's extremely important when faced with a patient with suspected amyloidosis to confirm that they have the disease, but not only to confirm that they have the disease, but to know exactly what type of amyloid they have. Uh, about five years ago, uh, we, in conjunction with several other uh, groups interested in amyloid, uh, including the National Amyloidosis Center in London, published a really seminal paper looking at uh, cardiac imaging with what we call technetium isotopes. Here. And we demonstrated that with this simple cardiac imaging technique, if the isotope is avidly taken up by the heart, then you have a diagnosis not just of amyloidosis, but of TTR amyloidosis. So potent is that that we no longer need to do biopsies of the heart in those patients. And we're seeing many patients now diagnosed because of this who previously would not have been diagnosed at all. There have been enormous strides in the last two or three years in treatment of amyloidosis in general, both AL amyloidosis with new agents that we are able to put people in remission for long periods of time, and also in the TTR amyloidoses in which new drugs have come along so that we can finally slow or even stop the progression of nerve damage in patients with familial amyloid, and I believe that we will be also able to uh, extrapolate them to move into cardiac amyloid and to slow and stop this disease. In terms of AL, or light chain amyloidosis, that treatment uh, is chemotherapy, and the chemotherapeutic regimens that have been developed, some of them developed initially at the Dana-Farber for myeloma, uh, these have to be modified not only for amyloidosis as opposed to myeloma, but also tailored to the individual patient. We have had a very high success rate in uh, prolonging people's lives, in getting people into remission, and potentially actually curing uh, some patients, many patients, with, with AL amyloidosis. In terms of transthyretin amyloidosis, for many years we didn't really have a good treatment. And uh, drugs have now been developed that either stabilize the transthyretin and prevent it breaking down. If you have no breakdown product, you don't develop amyloid. And recent trials have shown that that technique works, and soon we will be seeing the first such drug available for therapy of cardiac amyloid, dramatically lower these protein levels in patients' blood, and have now recently been shown in clinical trials of patients who have significant nerve damage from familial amyloid to really slow that down, and even in some patients to uh, stop the disease and potentially reverse it. We've gone from a decade ago where we had no treatment for TTR amyloid to having two or three new treatments available, and we're investigating even newer treatments to see if they work better. So I'm enormously optimistic that we've reached a new era in this disease where we've gone from what was previously a fatal disease to what is now becoming a curable disease. Perhaps by 2020 we will even see drugs that can dissolve the amyloid that is already in the tissues. Those studies are ongoing, they're very preliminary, but I am hopeful that of the two or three different approaches there we will have at least one of them that is successful. So it's an extremely exciting field, an extremely exciting time to be in it.